Hello YouTube, this is Chuck. Welcome back. Uh, if you're one of my subscribers, definitely welcome back. I know it's been a long time. i uh, been pretty busy with the military and such, and work as always. And a special thank you for all the veterans and those currently serving, and those who support the military. Thank you for the job that you do, and keep doing it. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about how I... <clears throat> Excuse me. How I personally knock out large numbers of models. As you can see here, my buddy Dave has been so gracious uh, to give me yet another commission of part of his uh, Grand Steel Legion Army of Imperial Guard. Of his colors are black, gray, red. Uh, weapons are silver. Barrels are colored in gold. Not a very fun painting to do. It's very grueling, to be honest with you. But <clears throat> excuse me again. I'm going to show you how we knock, how I knock them out. There's a dog in my room. Okay, out of my room. This, that's what you get for leaving the door open. Your dog decides to walk in. Uh, what I start off with is. As you can see down here in the in the uh, foreground here, uh, these are some of the uh, Imperial Guard. Here, this is one of the one of the uh, sergeants, uh, the one Darth Vader mask guy. Uh, of course, I start priming them all black. Do their bases. Once I got their bases done, I take a uh, stiff bristled nylon brush. Find these at a hardware store. Pretty stiff. I brush off all the remainder after 24 hours after the glue is set on the bases and get them relatively clean. Uh, next step I do, of course I use airbrush on to get them primed. Uh, next step I do is I went ahead and spray uh, pretty much the bases, the feet, you know, gray to start off with. Kind of gives me a jump start and everything. Uh, these guys here are the first color here I use a uh, stonewall gray from game color uh, number is uh, 049 I start off with that get him to the point where I have all the stuff that he wanted painted gray uh, done on the model and areas that are going to be red gray as well the best way to paint over red is to use a gray base Depending on how bright you want that red to be, it will depend on the color of red that you want. Also, depending on what color wash you're going to use as well. So once I do that, uh, I go into the red. Now I'm using old, uh, old uh, 1980s-ish uh, blood red from my original Citadel color scheme. Uh, but this is also uh, equal to, I believe it's also called Evil Sun Scarlet, or Evil Sun and Scarlet. Uh, then, uh, then if you want to do Vallejo, it's called Bloody Red. Its number is 010. It's about the closest color you're going to be able to get to a good blood red. I think the new color is called Mephiston Red. Uh, but anyway, go ahead and do all the reds. So we bump up to our next level here. You see, I got a lot of the reds done on it. He's got the boots, mask, gloves. It's all that's red on these particular models. Everything else is left gray. And then I go ahead and do a flesh. Here's an old D&D &D one. This is probably at least an ounce worth of paint. Uh, roughly elf flesh color. As you can see, I still have a whole, you can barely see it, but there is a whole lot left in here. I mean, it's filled still up to this neck. Uh, actually, just below the neck, but, and it's got a horrible smell to it. That's pretty much elf flesh if you're looking for. Elf flesh in game color is called elf skin tone, and it is 004, by the way. So... These models here, you're not going to be able to tell it very well, so I'm going to grab a different one. Uh, one that has flesh in it, you might be able to see it. Just basically the eyes and ears on this particular model is all there is. I'm trying to hold it as still as I can. Sorry if it bounces around. 
Uh, next color I do is going to be the silver for the weapons. The guys here in front are already prepped for that. They have their flesh colors already done. After the silver is done, I got his weapon done there. Put a hand behind it. Maybe that will help out a little bit for you. Uh, that's the only thing on these particular models that are that. Uh, the silver I use is a game color, again, uh, silver, and its number is 052. The next stage is going to be the gold. Now, these are just gold tipped barrels on the weapons. If you can see that guy well, there we go. We got a little bit better light there for you. See that barrel's painting gold? That's pretty much it. The next one is, as you can see, what's my hands on here. And all this is is my ver uh, is soft body black wash. I just make a whole, whole bunch of it up, and I use this as a dip for the models. Uh, why I do that is because I don't like the shiny. If you go with the quick shade from Army Painter, it winds up being very very shiny, such as this. Believe me, there's a big glare on this guy. And he doesn't like his shiny, just like the golds and the silvers. He likes this, he likes the glittery gold and silver. I don't care for the glitter, but he likes it that way, so I do it. Um, so after they're dipped, of course they got a nice wash color to them. Brings all the detail. As you can see, the base is kind of messed up. You know, there's there are bits and pieces in there where. Either I didn't get the gray on there right, or there's too much red somewhere. And that's where it comes in just to the detail and cleanup phase, which I'm generally pretty decent, and so all i got to do is just touch up the black, since most of the models are black anyway, and the bases. This is just a P3 color, Tamar black, but Chaos black or whatever black, will straight black, will work fine. Even if you have to use a standard apple color or folk art or whatever. And the models turn out much like this, which I will be doing a showcase on them as soon as I get them done. Um, I got over 60 miniatures here that I'm doing. Once you set up your assembly line like this, you always want to start and, and, and take your, in this case, gray, in this case, and then push that all the way down and pretty much get to the finish line except for the last color and do that keep doing that until you've got everything filled up is how I do it and then once I get to this stage I can start knocking models off bringing another set of four in I was doing sets of four it's a little bit easier to manage that way I used to do ten models at a time found it a little bit more daunting when you have a lot of models to do now if you're doing Marines sure 10 models at a time are fine. Uh, if you're doing something like hordes or war machine, uh, you have a lot smaller model count. Um, uh, generally, it's it's a little bit easier to do those. Uh, you also take more time on those. This is just a three color deal uh, with a wash on it. Relatively simple, but it is very daunting when you're doing several models. Uh, next up I have, after I get a lot of these models done, is I also have uh, two last cannon teams I got to get done. And uh, three tanks, three chimeras I'm doing up as well for him. And then uh, I'll show you all the stuff when I'm completely done with it. I just wanted to show a quick, quick way of how I do large count models. If this helps you, great. As always, subscribe, like, put your comment down below. Let me know how you guys do it. Uh, even if you're another commission painter and you do it differently, just let me know. Give me ideas. Um, some things that I like to use. Uh, one one caveat here at the end is there's uh, t people like to talk about brushes. Now I'm using a lot of Citadel brushes to do these. I don't care for them. Uh, I like the wash brush. I use a lot of stuff with the wash brush actually. The wash brush is pretty nice. The rest of them, just, just throw those away. I, I don't care for them at all. Um, Windsor Newton brushes are nice. I like using those in the, on these models. And uh, also, uh, Army Painter 
All right, painter brushes are really nice for this type of stuff as well. Just to give you guys some ideas, let me know what you think, and see you all later.